I think the thing that Trump was most perturbed about, me asking him to be my vice president, I think that was like lower on the list of things that caught him off guard. It was the fact that I walked in with intelligence. So Trump is really impressed with Nick Fuentes. And Nick Fuentes, unlike so many of the lawyers and so many people that he was left with on his 2020 campaign, he's actually a loyalist. When he didn't know where the lawyers is, you'll still have your lawyer list. And when all the lawyers said, forget it, Trump's done, there were loyalists running up yep. in the White House, right? And my question would be, why, when you had the chance, did you not free the January Sixers? And I came to him as someone who loves Trump, and I said, go and get Corey back. Go and get these people that the media tried to cancel and told you to step away from. He basically gives me this would-be mob-esque kind of story talking to some kid from the south side of Chicago trying to sound mobby or whatever. He goes into the story about all that he went through to get Alice Johnson out of jail and how he didn't do it for Kim, but he did it for me. But then he goes on to say that Kim is a and you could tell her I said that. And I was thinking like, that's the mother of my children. Since we know, and all the Christians in America that love Trump know that Trump is a conservative, we're going to demand that you hold all policies directly to the Bible. When Trump started basically screaming at me at the table telling me I was going to lose, I mean, has that ever worked for anyone in history? Me <laughs> You're going to lose. Tell him he's going to lose. lose. Tell him. I'm like, well, well, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, Trump. You're talking and to Ye. Ye. is one of the best-selling musical artists in the world. He's also in recent years become a celebrated and very highly paid fashion designer. And of course, for a decade, he was well-known to TV audiences as an in-law of the Kardashian family. But it's West's latest incarnation as a kind of Christian evangelist that brought us to his office in Los Angeles today for the interview you're about to see. Days ago, during Fashion Week in Paris, West, accompanied by his friend Candace Owens, unveiled a T-shirt that read simply, White Lives Matter. The response from the fashion industry and international media was instantaneous and uniform. Shock, horror, rage. We have got to cancel him, and I know we should not try to be in a cancel culture, but we've got to hit him in his pockets now. I gave him my opinion, you know, uh, to never be hurtful to nobody or nothing like this, and trust in God. What was strikingly missing from the coverage, however, was any explanation for why West did this. What was the T-shirt about? No one seemed to think to ask him, much less to listen to what he had to say. Look, I forgive him for the things that he said because I'd already identified with something's going on that I don't understand now. Instead, the enemies of his ideas dismissed West, as they have for years, as mentally ill. Listen, okay. What's I'm going on, guys? Guy. It's your boy, John the Liquidator, and I'm back with another hot topic and another Kanye West update, guys. Shout out to the guy. Elon Musk just want to squeeze this in here for reinstating everybody's Twitter back, such as Trump, Andrew Tate, and our guy Kanye, man. Kudos to you, Elon, for just doing what was right, man. And what was right was giving people back their Twitter, giving them back their voice, man. Freedom of speech is supposed to be free. Uh, we're supposed to openly say whatever we want without any consequences because everybody is entitled to their opinion. But with that being said, guys, let's jump right back into content. And let's talk about this Kanye West video we just seen. So, in this video here, Kanye West recently led a reporter into his Yeezy headquarters, uh, which I've done a video about that. You guys can go back and look at the library. Uh, he gave everybody a tour of the new Yeezy's headquarters. So, he just recently, uh, with him being reinstated back on Twitter, he let a uh, reporter come in and ask him some questions. In this conversation, he discussed a dinner that he had with former President Donald Trump, man. So, him and Donald Trump had a dinner um, I don't know if it was recently or in the past, but whatever the case may be, uh, Kanye has stated that uh, he asked Donald Trump to be his vice president. So Donald Trump looked at him like he was a damn fool. So he didn't think Kanye was serious. We all know how Kanye is. He's very serious about the things that he says. And he was, in fact, very serious about that situation at hand. So with that being said, he looked at him, kind of caught him off guard with that, uh, Kanye has stated. And he also said something briefly about his wife being a you-know-what. 
you know, I'm not going to say it because I'm not in the light of disrespecting people, uh, wives or mothers or anything like that. But yeah, that was a very derogatory term and mark he gave Kim in regards to, uh, which wasn't right, you know, but once again, everybody is entitled to her opinion, to their opinion, but he shouldn't have stated to the man, like that's his wife, you know, but to each his own, you know, um, but Kanye did not take kindly to it. And something he said in the very end that really stuck out to me was that Donald Trump told Kanye West, hey, you're going to lose. So with that being said, I don't know if you guys seen that Kanye West uh, documentary on Netflix. You know, you guys might want to check that out. It's not sponsored or anything. But in that documentary, everybody was telling Kanye, hey, bro, you're not going to be a musician you're better at making beats. They can't see you being a rapper. You can't rap and this and that. Now, look, years later, he's one of the biggest rappers ever. You know, he just sold millions of records all over the world. So with somebody telling him he's not going to do something, that does nothing but just put a battery in his back. Give him juice to do whatever he's finna do. So with that being said, I don't know, man. It's being official that Kanye will be running for president in the year 2024, possibly up against Donald Trump. But I believe Donald Trump did just announce that he will be running again in 2024. So we just got to wait and see, man. We got a lot of stuff coming ahead of us, though. If Kanye is planning on running for president, I would sure like to see how the hell this finna turn out. But kudos to him, man. Anybody can run. I can run. You can run. But with Kanye, man, I don't know how this is going to turn out for him, but we just got to wait and see. I know he has a lot of support uh, from people all over the world, and especially here in our country. A lot of people are supporting what he's doing. Some people is just like hating what he's doing. So I feel like he's kind of at a divide right now, like with the love and hate thing. So we just got to wait and see, man. But for as anything else developing, man, I'll be sure to bring you guys updates, letting you guys know if anything else come across my desk or come across anywhere with Kanye or with any other hot topics, man. It's your boy, John the Liquidator, and I'm out of here, y'all. Peace out.